thank you very much, Hank. Uh, thank you uh, for the organizers. Thank you, Stefano. Uh, you're late. Uh, I'm going to speak about stability of elliptic equilibria in uh, Hamiltonian systems. So I will be always considering a frequency in RD. I will be considering a Hamiltonian function. where the HKs are uh, polynomials of degree K. So uh, here, uh, the origin O is uh, an equilibrium or a fixed point for the flow, the Hamiltonian flow uh, given by the Hamiltonian equations that I will call star. And I am interested in stability of O. Uh, let me immediately say that the same study would uh, uh, also apply in most of the cases to uh, the stability of tori for systems that now I would write in action angle coordinates. As follows. So omega bar is equal to omega 1, omega d. And the flow is and here we have the torus T0, which is equal to Td times 0, is invariant by the flow. So same question. We want stability of T. And now the stability is, of course, understood in the action variables R. We have uh, uh, three notions of stability. First one is Lyapunov stability. Uh, by Lyapunov stability, it's the classical topological stability where we say that the point that starts in the neighborhood of zero remains in the neighborhood of, in some neighborhood of zero. Uh, we have stability in probability, which is also called KM stability. We will be interested in this stability also. And this is when uh, zero is a density or T point for invariant quasi-periodic tori. There are Lagrangian, etc. And the third type of stability we will be interested in is called effective stability, which is a quantitative approach to stability. So this is stability in, in probability. Here, effective stability is a quantitative approach. It is just asking for how long a solution that starts near zero remains near zero. Nevertheless, uh, this is the most classical one, the oldest approach, and it's really natural. Uh, so let me just go ahead and give a definition so we call th of r, it's the maximum time such that phi t such that for any z less than r, phi th 
of z is less than 2r uh, for any t less than big T. It's clear. It's just saying that during the time T of R, the flow doesn't move from the ball of size R outside the ball of size 2R. So give upper and lower bounds on TH of R. That will be the uh, exercise in effective stability. Uh, what are the ingredients when one studies stability for Hamiltonian systems? There are four ingredients, mainly. The first one is the regularity of H. Is it real analytic? In which case, this is a power series that is convergent in some radius of convergence when, with a positive radius of convergence when you complexify X and Y. Uh, the other uh, uh, possibility at the other extreme is consider, for example, symplectic maps with a piecewise affine uh, twist. Uh, and uh, the situation is uh, completely unknown whether this will yield, uh, will lead to instability or stability. We uh, expect instability for very low regularity, um, but not much is known. So uh, between uh, low regularity and real analyticity, there is a lot of difference. What is the second ingredient? The second ingredient is non-degeneracy conditions on the HIs. The third ingredient, very important, is arithmetics. So what are the arithmetics of omega? What are the arithmetics of the Torah we're looking for? All this is important. Let me just remind you what is a Diophantine vector. Omega is uh, said to belong to a Diophantine uh, 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 condition with constant gamma strictly positive and tau larger than zero if for any k in Zd not zero, we have that k omega, the scalar product, is lower bounded by gamma over k to the power d plus tau. This is Euclidean norm. Um, when omega is resonant, if you have a rational relation on the omega i's, it's very easy to understand that uh, diffusion instability is very likely to happen. So we will go ahead and standing assumption. Uh, it is interesting to study stability in the case of resonant frequencies, but we will be only interested in uh, in absence of resonancy, so omega bar is uh, uh, non-resonant, which means that if sum of ki omega i is equal to zero, then all the ki's are equal to zero for here if k is in zd. Um, this is natural because this will give will be reason for stability, uh, for instance, because of um, averaging. So um, before I talk about non-degeneracy, I probably have to uh, introduce Birkhoff normal forms uh, that are the most uh, uh, the, the uh, powerful tool to study stability. So Birkhoff normal forms. So we will also assume that H is at least C infinity. Uh, so because omega is non-resonant and H is C infinity, then we know that uh, for any K in N, uh, there exists a symplectic uh, local symplectic diffeo around zero uh, such that H composed with phi k writes in a normal form, which is omega bar, which is omega bar 
I plus uh, plus rest and here the rest is the polynomial of degree at least k plus 1 in the variables x, y, and i is equal to i1 id. It's equal to So these are the action variables. And this is the uh, classical Birkhoff normal forms for an elliptic fixed point. And we have similar Birkhoff normal forms for tori, but under just uh, the additional condition that omega is Joffentine, omega bar. Otherwise, we don't have Birkhoff normal forms for tori. So B and F for tori if omega is in DC. DC is just the union of DC gamma tau over all tau and gamma. So now what are the usual non-degeneracy conditions that one resorts to to have stability? Well, first of all, first of all, uh, let me say that uh, Birkhoff normal form of order k uh, implies that TR is lower bounded by R to the minus K, right? Because this is stable, and this is the rest, and the rest starts with a polynomial of degree K plus 1. And this means we have this. Nevertheless, this will be true only for R bigger than some RK, and RK uh, is probably very, very small as k increases if you don't have any control on the arithmetics. So now, if you put in arithmetics, so now, if omega bar is in dc gamma tau, then one can use the Birkhoff normal forms and find out that tr is bigger than exponential minus r to the power 1 over tau plus 1. And this, for r, less than some r that depends on gamma. And tau and the norm of h uh, in some, uh, in some uh, analytic norm. But this is much better than this, right? Because it's really giving you uh, exponential effective stability. How do you obtain this? It's, uh, if I want to do it uh, waving hands, I would tell you just to uh, do Birkhoff normal forms uh, perform B and F up to K of order 1 over R to the power 1 over tau. Uh, why is this so? Because when you perform Birkhoff normal forms, you uh, pay um, each time with a small divisor, but the small divisor will give you, after you perform k times, will give you k factorial to the power gamma, to the power tau, uh, divided by gamma to the power k. And the rest, so now I'm, I'm estimating the rest after I've done these Birkhoff normal forms on a ball of size r, or say 2r. OK? So on a ball of size 2r, the rest, I would have here a 2r to the power my, to the power k, because h, ah, I will now assume h here. h is real analytic. This is important in this uh, conclusion. It's really important in this conclusion, OK? So you optimize here choosing this k. And you get by Stirling formula something like this is like e to the minus r to the minus. 
that's more or less the uh, this is yeah. So that's more or less the the reasoning, and we uh, immediately see what I said that the often time properties uh, play an important role in stability. Now, if you want to go beyond this simple application of Birkhoff normal forms, you need non-degeneracy conditions often. So the non-degeneracy conditions you have the first condition is Kolmogorov condition. It's when B is non-singular. In this case, because B is non-singular, the frequency map near zero that is given by the gradient here, which will be omega bar plus Bi in the first approximation, in the linear approximation, the frequency map, uh, is a diffeomorphism from a neighborhood of zero onto neighborhood of omega bar. And that's why you uh, uh, visit all the frequencies. And therefore, you visit in particular all the good Diophantine frequencies. And by KM scheme, you save these tori. And this gives you KM stability. Uh, the other condition is known as the Arnold non-degenerate, isoenergetic non-degenerate condition. This one is, can be stated like this. This is the D plus one matrix, and you want this matrix to have a non-zero determinant. And this will give you Km stability inside each energy surface which has a, a, a meaning because energy surfaces are invariant by the flow. The third and most relaxed non-degenerate condition, you need to, uh, you need to uh, first accept that there exists an infinite Birkhoff normal form. Uh, so formally, formally, one can define uh, phi infinity as a power series, uh, phi infinity as a power series, and H composed with phi infinity, it's a symplectic diffeomorphism formally, is equal to NH of I. So there is no rest anymore. And when this application, as a formal application, has, so, Roosman condition, non-degenerate condition, is that uh, NH does not live in a subspace of positive codimension. So it's also about visiting all frequencies or visiting many frequencies when the action uh, varies. Uh, finally, the last uh, condition I will be interested in is the uh, Nekhoroshev steepness condition. I'm not going to write it down explicitly because if I do so, uh, some people may want to spend 10 minutes thinking about it and uh, I would lose them. So I will just say that um, uh, H, so suppose the Birkhoff normal form here, uh, the beginning of the Birkhoff normal form, some function H of I is uh, steep if for any subspace, for any plane, so I call plane any uh, linear subspace of RD. For any plane, lambda, for any uh, path gamma inside lambda of 
um, of length uh, xi, uh, gradient of h on gamma, gradient of h projected on, on lambda will become larger than uh, xi to some power a for some point on gamma. So it's saying the following. You have a plane here, lambda, and you're moving. If you move by xi along some, uh, this length, I don't mean length, I mean a distance from the point you started with, OK? Uh, of uh, that goes beyond Xi. OK? Uh, then, at some point inside the path, the gradient will have a projection onside the plane. And what is this for? It is simple to see why this is useful for uh, diffusion. Because, look, if you want to diffuse with a uh, Hamiltonian of this kind, then obviously you need to start by diffusing in a direction that is orthogonal to omega, right? But when you are diffusing in a direction that is orthogonal to gamma, to omega, because the Hamiltonian must be uh, constant, you, you want to diffuse in a direction orthogonal to omega. And then it's telling you that uh, the gradient, you will meet the gradient inside this plane, which means you need to move inside the plane also. You cannot be along a subplane in this plane. And therefore, you uh, reduce one more uh, uh, direction of possible diffusion. And you are now in d minus 2 possibilities, because now you have another omega prime, and you must be in the orthogonal of this one. And this is a lower dimensional plane. And you do it d times, and you cannot diffuse anymore. So that's the idea. That's really the, the type of proof that is behind Nekhoroshev uh, exponential stability results. But I will come back to this. So what are the conjectures and results in this, uh, in this uh, area? Well. First of all, first of all, there are only, only two known cases of Lyapunov stability. So what are these known cases? The first case, case one, is when all omega i's are of the same sign, right? Because here, if all the omega i's are the same sign, this is a, a convex function. The energy levels look like ellipsoids uh, that uh, uh, converge to zero, uh, and they trap the dynamics, so you cannot escape from the neighborhoods of zero. Uh, the, this is true in any dimension. And the second case, so when I said there are uh, three ingredients of uh, stability, I forgot to say that there is a fourth one, which is uh, dimension and topology. And it works in low uh, degrees of freedom, so for d equal to 2, and for h that is Arnold non-degenerate, uh, we have Km stability inside each uh, energy surface, but each energy surface is three-dimensional, so the two-dimensional tori separate the surface and trap the dynamics. So this gives uh, uh, isoenergetic Km stability gives Lyapunov stability. 
Now, the common sentence that we uh, often hear and use that says that KM stability in two degrees of freedom implies Lyapunov stability is misleading. As this example shows, I uh, have a, a, a theorem with uh, Masha Saprikina that says the following, that says, attention, attention, if omega bar is equal to omega one, omega two, and omega one, omega two is strictly negative, so different signs, then there exists H that is C infinity, uh, as in star, that is K Kolmogorov KM stable, but not Lyapunov stable. So I think this question, uh, Stefano Marmi asked me this question in a, in a talk. So, okay. So this means that there is some energy surface inside which you can still escape. In most of the energy surfaces, you will have the KM phenomenon, but not in all of them. Okay. Uh, now, beside these two cases, the known conjecture of Arnold is that for d larger than 3 and omega i not of same sign, I could say it a little bit more, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in a sophisticated way, I would say that the quadratic part here is sign definite. If the quadratic part is not sign definite, then generically, H as in star, uh, O is Lyapunov unstable. Okay, and we have Dwadi in the 90s gave examples, gave C infinity examples of unstable elliptic equilibria. Raphael. And the first paper was with, uh, with uh, Patrice Le Calvez in dimension three, and then uh, he generalized it. And uh, the idea here is uh, very uh, nice because he can diffuse no matter what is the Birkhoff normal form. But it's only smooth. Uh, let me insist on the fact that although the conjecture is stated for generic Hamiltonians, not a single example is known. So question uh, is every analytic equilib uh, elliptic equilibrium uh, stable? So of course the answer is expected to be wrong, but uh, no, no examples are uh, available. Let me insist on the fact that it is easier to prove stability for fixed points, and it's easier to construct diffusion for Torah. So I'm insisting on saying it this way. It seems uh, equivalent statements, but uh, I like to say it like this. And uh, for example, here, I can construct a torus, we, we can construct a torus uh, that is superluvial and that is analytic and that is unstable, but not for fixed points. So there is a problem for fixed points at this moment. And there is another conjecture in the field, central conjecture also, is that Hermann conjecture is that even if you don't want to consider generic conditions, then uh, all analytic elliptic equilibria 
that are Joffen time are KM stable. So this also is not at all uh, known. And let me now mention the uh, a series of recent results that is related to these questions and try to discuss them with you and ask you some questions. So the first theorem I'm going to mention is a joint work with Eliasson and Krikorian from Paris. And it says the following, if, uh, if H is analytic uh, and NH is non, is Rusman non-degenerate, then O is KM stable. I must say that our study of stability of equilibria is related to the so-called fundamental problem of dynamics of studying the stability of perturbations of completely integrable systems. And in this system, if H is not Rusman non-degenerate, then easy to, uh, to uh, uh, preclude KM stability, to produce examples without KM stability. Okay? So this is, should be the optimal condition, even in our, our situation is actually more difficult than this one because we are in a setting where the perturbation of the completely integrable part is uh, a singular perturbation because it depends on uh, the equilibrium itself. When you will write the, uh, the you cannot, separate the perturbation from the integrable part. Because the integrable part will be the Birkhoff normal form, and it is given by the perturbation. While here, you can think of small h as independent of big h. Think about the a priori unstable diffusive examples. Uh, here, uh, it also works for tori. So if omega bar is Joffen time, then, uh, and NH is non-degenerate, then we can have also for tori KM stability. Moreover, in the case of tori, moreover, uh, if NH is degenerate, then T0 is accumulated by uh, manifolds foliated with KM tori. So in the real analytic situation, you always have accumulation of the uh, torus at zero by other tori. But they don't have, we could not prove no positive measure for the moment. for the moment. So we didn't prove positive measure. So uh, we didn't prove Hermann conjecture. Uh, the first statements are true even for smooth Hamiltonian. But this one really needs uh, analytic condition. At least, at least Hermann conjecture needs analytic condition as the following theorem shows so for any omega in rd d 
larger than 4, there exists H in C infinity as in star such that uh, uh, phi T H is uh, such that O or T is not is not KM stable. Unfortunately, we could not do it for D equal to 3. Uh, we don't know what happens for D equal to 3. For D equal to 2, uh, the uh, celebrated uh, uh, last geometric theorem of Hermann tells you that even in C infinity Hamiltonians, uh, the uh, KM stability will hold. Not Lyapunov stability, but KM stability for D equal to 2. So D equal to 2 H C infinity and omega is DC, then KM stable. This is Hermann's last geometric theorem. Uh, so this construction we did it for, for Tori, we did it with Eliasson and Raphael, and for equilibria, we are doing it with Masha Saprikina. So here again, for equilibria, uh, you need, uh, it's a little bit more subtle, the construction, because you must take care of what happens in zero. You cannot uh, diffuse, for example, with negative R, as you do here. So think, for example, of the case where all the omega i's are of the same sign. So here you are saying that you will not be KM stable, but you will be Lyapunov stable. Okay? So these, in particular, will be Lyapunov stable and not KM stable when all the omega i's have the same sign. Okay? Uh, my third theorem I want to talk about is a joint work with, uh, so it's not a Birkhoff normal form, but almost, with Bunmura and Niederman. And it says the following. It's a result on effective stability. So it says that if H is real analytic as in star, and if omega bar is Diophantine, then T of R is bigger than exponential of exponential of a constant times R to the power 1 over tau plus 1. And this constant is explicit. You can explicit it in terms of gamma, tau, the norm of H, the dimension, etc. So this is called, so we say that O is double exponentially stable or O is sticky. Okay, let me say just a comment about this theorem. Well, first of all, uh, it's not uh, exact what I said. I forgot to say that, uh, one second, I, I need an extra assumption. Uh, if, uh, uh, well, the, the, sorry, here I forgot to say that there exists an D of omega uh, bar, it's a set in the space of polynomials of uh, degree 2D and uh, of uh, 2D variables and degree 2M. And here M is just D squared over 2 plus 2. And this is uh, ND of full Lebesgue measure. And uh, open dense. Okay, such that, 
such that if so that's say this is say this is a definition we say we say that o is sticky if we have this okay such that if uh, if sum of hk so the first terms in the taylor expansion of h for k less than 2m are in these uh, in this set uh, then O is sticky. So let me comment on this. Well, first of all, this result was known when the uh, H, uh, when in the Birkhoff normal form, the second term you get, the quadratic term. So when you do Birkhoff normal form, you have H composed with phi is omega i plus uh, Ti bi plus blah, blah. If this is sign definite, uh, we say that the Hamiltonian is convex. So for convex Hamiltonian, uh, Morbidelli and Giorgili, Giorgili and Morbidelli had a similar statement for tori. For convex, okay, uh, our condition is much more general because convex is a nice set, but it's far from being generic. Uh, the second thing I want to say is that uh, the theorem is still okay for Liouville frequencies, but but you need to uh, adapt. The exponential here will be some function that depends on our explicit function on omega and r. That depends on the arithmetics. And uh, the other thing I want to say is that the same result holds for tori. And that in, in, in a recent work, we're trying to sh we prove some kind of the following result for, gener for general h. Uh, we have that. Most Km tori of H of I plus epsilon H I theta analytic, huh? analytic are sticky. Okay? So this is the result that is the counterpart, uh, that is the extension of Morbidelli and Giorgili. They prove that if H is convex, then the tori here will be double exponentially stable. We show that for any H, for very general H, the uh, very prevalent H, the KM tori, all of them, will be double exponentially stable. Uh, now, the, 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 the other thing I want to say is that it is true for Gevray. And it's true for... Uh, for uh, uh, symplectic maps. And it's uh, the only case where nothing is known is nothing is known for Liouville tori. Why? Well, because, because you cannot do Birkhoff normal forms. OK. Uh, now, there is one question that you can ask is, do you really need the, um, non-degeneracy conditions. And uh, you can conjecture, exactly like in Hermann, that for any analytic equilibrium, you have uh, stickiness if it is Diophantine, double exponential stable. So the conjecture will be that uh, Diophantine torus is double exponentially stable, it is KM stable, and in general, it is Lyapunov unstable. That's the full that's, that's the, 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 I would say, the, up, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the goal. I mean, the goal of, of the whole theory. Uh, the other question, natural question, is whether this double exponential bound is optimal. And then uh, it's hard to answer it because it's hard to construct diffusive analytic equilibria even Liouville, super Liouville, 
diffuse his equilibrium. We don't know how to do it. So let alone doing diffusion and computing the diffusion speed for uh, Diophantine equilibrium that is non-degenerate. Nevertheless, we have uh, a clue to the fact that uh, this double exponential is optimal since we prove the following thing. There exists, with David Sozin from uh, Pisa, there exists, uh, uh, there exists uh, Gevray alpha H uh, bar equals H of I plus epsilon H I theta. So this is a small perturbation of this integrable part. And H is quasi-convex. So quasi-convex, it's convex in the orthogonal direction to the gradient, to omega bar. Uh, and uh, as and H as in star, OK? And H is quasi-convex. Uh, but nevertheless, all KM tori are not more than sticky. In the sense that we prove that for any given torus, uh, TR in the neighborhood of the torus is going to be less than exponential of exponential of uh, 1 over R to the power 1 over alpha. Uh, here, uh, we uh, regret not to have the factor tau that should appear, uh, 1 over tau should appear. Uh, but we, for the moment, we cannot uh, see it. But uh, we, we're working on this, and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit technical. Uh, I uh, don't have time to explain any proof. I'm sorry, I thought I would explain some proofs, but uh, I don't have time.